Hey, everybody, it's Lon Seipin. We're here at CES 2020, my fifth outing to the big consumer electronics show here in Las Vegas. What we like to do on the channel is a dispatch style of reporting, where we just run into a bunch of events like this, take the camera with us, and whatever we find, we report on. We're looking for cool and interesting things that may not be making it to other media sources out there, and we always seem to find a lot of hidden gems at these shows. So this is going to be a mix of unknown stuff and known stuff, and your feedback is also very useful while we're out here. So if there's anything you want me to see, definitely let me know down in the comment stream. Uh, what we're going to be doing first here is going into CES Unveiled, which is an event where there's probably about 200 companies or so, all at different tables that we can go from one to the next and see what they're offering for the coming year. So let's head on in there and see what they got. So we stopped by the Dell table here, and they've got the brand new XPS 13s that are coming out on Tuesday. And what they've done here is they've made the screen larger by shrinking the bezels on it, and they made the keyboard larger too, but it's got all that lightweight stuff that the other ones have had, including the carbon fiber and everything else. And I'm eager to check these out. I've, I've long liked the Dell uh, XPS devices, and this is a nice uh, revision of something that's worked really well for them in the past. And there is a webcam on it. It's up here at the top. So unlike the prior models that had the webcam down here, you've got one up top. And all together, it looks like a pretty nice device. It's got Thunderbolt on there. And uh, we'll be hopefully getting one in to check it out soon to see how it performs. So if you have $10,000 laying around, you can buy a smart toilet. This toilet from Kohler has integrated Amazon Alexa. It will also solve a lot of problems around the house because it has an automatic seat adjustment. So if you are often accused, as I am, of not putting the seat down, it will do it for you. Even has modes when you walk up to it, you can have it open itself up and get ready to uh, do your business. Uh, it also has an integrated bidet and everything else, so it's really a high-end device. It'll even dry you off when it's done cleaning things out for you. So uh, nice little toilet there from Kohler. And again, you've got Amazon Alexa built right in, and you can have it turn your lights on and off if you want to. Now, if you're looking for something a little more affordable but still smart in the bathroom, their shower head here called the Moxie might be worth taking a look at. About $269. It has a speaker integrated along with Amazon Alexa. So you can do some stuff in the uh, shower with your Alexa and also get music on it. But it doesn't plug into power. It's got a rechargeable battery, so you can just pull it off, charge it when you need to, and then put it back on so you don't have to worry about electrical going into your shower. That's called the Moxie from Kohler. So here's a new product from a company we saw last year at CES. This is the new Travel Size Benji Lock. Uh, this product originated on Shark Tank, the TV show here in the U.S., and has become part of the uh, Hampton family of products here. Now, this is designed for luggage, and as such, it has a TSA key at the bottom of it. So you can lock your luggage and unlock it with a fingerprint or a code on the back. And this will be very useful for folks who often lose their luggage keys. They're very tiny keys, so this one doesn't need a key, just your fingerprint to get in. They cost about 50 bucks. We've got one in the bag now, so we'll be reviewing it on the channel in the near future, so stay tuned. So we stopped by the Withings table, and in full disclosure, Withings has done some sponsored content on the channel. Uh, they make these great smart watches that look really nice because they have a traditional watch face, but they have a lot of integrated features in them that other smart watches do. And they're coming out with a new one probably in the second quarter that adds a lot of new health data that it can collect. So it can detect sleep apnea. Uh, they're adding an ECG feature. They're also looking at oxygen saturation. So if you're out exercising and you want to make sure that you're getting enough oxygen, it will measure that. And it will tie the uh, oxygen to the sleep apnea events as well. So a really comprehensive device. Get about 30 days of battery life out of these, so they're good for sleep tracking as well. And hopefully we'll get one in when they come out, because I'm really eager to see how this all works. So we're now at my favorite event of the CES experience, which is Pepcom's Digital Experience. This is one of the largest single events that I attend. And we always find a lot of cool and upcoming stuff inside. So let's head on into that. So we stopped over at the pluggable table, and they have a new USB-C and Thunderbolt dock. It will work with either one. So if you've got an older laptop with USB-C, you plug it in, it works with that. But if you plug it into a Thunderbolt-equipped PC, you get that Thunderbolt bandwidth and all the things that you can do with it. It has four display outputs, but you can only use two outputs at a time. But what's nice about this is that you get both HDMI 
and DisplayPort, and you can choose which one you want without having to use an adapter. So it looks like this is going to be something that will reduce a lot of confusion in the marketplace, because if you have the right port, whether it's Thunderbolt or USB-C, it's going to work. Uh, this one costs about the same as other docks, $299. It also delivers 100 watts of power delivery, and you've got a bunch of USB-C or USB ports on the back as well. We'll try to get one of these into review and see how it works. So we also found this little device at the pluggable table. This is a two and a half gig Ethernet adapter. And it connects up, of course, via USB-C, but you also can use it via USB 3.0, so it should work uh, even with older computers. And we're seeing now a lot of 10 gig devices showing up. So if you plug this into a 10 gig switch, you'll get the two and a half gigs. And in many cases, that might be enough for one of those faster internet connections now that might give you a little bit more bandwidth than gigabit ethernet can provide. It's gonna sell for about $49, so not all that much more than your regular USB-C ethernet adapter. And if you've been looking for a little more speed, this is something portable and affordable that I think a lot of people might like. So we've heard of cutting the cable cord, but what about your phone cord? Uh, this is called the UMA, O-O-M-A. It's $99, and what it can do is act as a voice over IP for your home. So you can have little wireless base stations all over that can connect to analog phones or just plug it directly into where your telephone company used to connect to. And then you just pay your taxes for universal service and whatnot, and you've got a free phone line. They have additional services for $99 a month that includes caller ID and voicemail and a few other things. Now, if we scroll up, uh, you can see they have an antenna there because if you lose power or internet, of course, your phone line goes down. But their 4G option here, which costs a little bit more, uh, will give you the ability to uh, offload to a wireless connection and still have your home phones work. So it's a good way to kind of get the best of both worlds of a wired phone, yet the reliability that you had before. Uh, that costs a little bit more. There's also a monthly fee associated with it. It's about $12 a month. But again, it's still cheaper than a regular phone line. Now, I've been a big fan of these Mevo cameras. We reviewed one about two years ago or so, and they are kind of an all-inclusive streaming solution. And the original camera that we looked at looked like this, and it had a 4K sensor, and it would automatically switch between people who were talking and made things look a little more robust than they were in reality, a really neat streaming device. But it had a lot of little gotchas that kind of annoyed people, and they have come up with a new version. Uh, this one is called the Mevo Start. I had to look over and see what the name of it was. It's gonna sell, I believe, for $2.99. It'll run for about four hours, and this will stream out to most of the major streaming services uh, without having any additional hardware necessary. It connects up to your Wi-Fi, and you're good to go. There's a couple of other neat things about it, though, that I thought were intriguing. Uh, one is that there's a power over Ethernet option uh, using its USB-C port in the back. That's kind of cool. You do have to buy an adapter from them for that. Uh, it also will allow you to connect five microphones via Bluetooth from a smartphone if you want to do something a little complicated there, and it will sync up all the microphones so there's no delay on them. But it also has an audio input on the back now, which the other one didn't have. Uh, so you can plug your mixer or a microphone directly into it. The one thing it doesn't do, though, is switch between people, but you can bank up multiple cameras and do that uh, through an app. So this has got a lot of potential, I think, because it seems to be pretty flexible. The one thing I wish it could do would be NDI, because an NDI camera in this kind of form factor would be awesome. But keep an eye on this. $299, I think, is pretty reasonable. They're taking pre-orders now. I think it'll be shipping by the spring. Hopefully, we'll get one in to take a look at it. So this was something I thought was a little interesting. This is called the Hoop Camera. It is a security camera like the many that we have looked at on the channel in the past. This is their uh, $129 PTZ version. They also have a less expensive non-PTC one. And it'll do all the basics and there's no subscription for the basics. But if you pay, I think, a $12 a month fee, uh, you get some artificial intelligence that will recognize people as they enter your home. And they tell me you can register the faces of your family and authorize visitors to the house. And when those folks come home, uh, it will tell you that they came home. And if maybe your kid comes home with themselves and three other people, it'll let you know that your kid is home along with three other unauthorized individuals. And you can program people in to authorize them. You do have to have them take a photo with the camera to register them. But after that, it will recognize the faces and give you reports. And it's also got one other feature that my wife might like because 
uh, you can set it up so that every time a specific person walks by the camera, it will nag them to do things. So my job is to take the trash out, and if it sees me walking by the camera, my wife can have the camera tell me when I walk by to take the garbage out. So kind of a neat little product here. Again, the hoop. It just came out today, and maybe we'll get one in to take a look at it. So this little device is called the Link, and it's a uh, location finder, but it doesn't use cellular networks. Uh, what you do is you turn it on and you have it paired up with other links. And as you're out hiking or something, you can take one with you or take multiple ones with you and kind of drop them as breadcrumbs as you go. And it sets up its own network so they communicate through each other and you can find out where the other devices are, which are presumably attached to people that you might be looking for. Uh, they last for about a day or so in active use, uh, but it does charge via USB, so I guess you could plug in a larger battery or something to supplement that. And it's a neat idea of being able to find people anywhere if you don't have cell service somewhere. You can kind of set up a protocol when you're out hiking as to where you drop these things and kind of know where you're going. Uh, the price on this is $249, and they'll sell them in pairs of two, which you kind of need to to make it work. So not all that bad, and I think if you're looking for something as a safety measure when you're out hiking somewhere or just trying to keep track of where people are, kind of a useful device. It'll even show you what direction the person was last seen in as well, and it uses that from GPS data that it collects and then transmits to the other devices. Pretty cool device. I know a lot of you have kids at home, some of them infants, and you might want to be looking for stuff to make them cry a little less often. So I had one of these for my daughter. Uh, this is the four moms uh, little thing you can put them in, and I kind of wanted one for me too. And it actually was a great thing for my daughter to calm her down when she was not happy. Uh, this new one now is called the Mama Rube uh, Sleep Bassinet. And it's $329, and it takes the same concept as the little seat there and applies it to sleep. So you have different motions that it can do. It can vibrate and kind of soothe them uh, to sleep. And it looks like something, again, that I wouldn't mind taking a nap in also if it was a little bit larger. Uh, pretty cool stuff. It comes out very shortly. Now, these are little chargers from Aukey. Uh, the big one here is 100 watts. The little one is 61 watts. And if you compare that to the charger that came with your laptop, these are a lot smaller. They have a 65 watt that has two USB-C power ports on it. Uh, that one is uh, going to kind of split the volt or the amperage between the two, but very, very small. Now what they do is they will throttle power if they get too hot, like many small things tend to do. But generally your MacBook Pro is not going to draw the full 100 watts or the 85 watts that it uses all the time. Really, it will draw that much when it's charging the battery and running at full blast. So if you're looking for a smaller way to charge your devices, these might be worth taking a look at. Uh, no price on these yet, but they're coming out soon, and they say they'll be competitive with other power solutions. Here's another dock that I thought was intriguing. This is a Thunderbolt 3 dock from Seagate. It has integrated storage, 4 terabytes. It costs $369. Uh, there's another one that has a smaller hard drive that costs a little less. You get all of the port replication that you typically do on a Thunderbolt dock, but you've got the integrated storage. The other neat thing is they've integrated an M2 slot, so you could add an MVME SSD to it and get yourself a, a gaming level uh, SSD integrated into your Thunderbolt dock in addition to that spinning hard drive. That's a pretty neat feature. Now they also have a gaming drive that starts at 259. This is USB-C but it supports the new USB-C 20 gigabit spec. So you have to have a device that supports that to get the full speed, but of course it'll go backwards to the 10 and the 5 if you need that. Uh, it has an RGB light that you can configure on it as well. They have a two terabyte version that you can get there too. Pretty cool gaming stuff from Seagate. Now we looked at a very inexpensive video switcher the other day from Blackmagic and I was talking about how the industry is going to be moving in a much less expensive direction and what do you know, we found this one from IO Gear. This is called the Upstream Pro. It's $9.99, so a little more expensive, but it has greater capabilities. Uh, so as you can see here, you can scale video windows and have, uh, oops, I hit the wrong button there, uh, and then have graphics go uh, full screen, of course, full motion. It can take two video sources at the same time and scale them along with other graphics that you might want to include on screen. And you can queue up, uh, I think, uh, eight different things. So you can have two cameras plus six additional scenes that you've set up that you can very easily switch between. 
It works with the iPad where you can get a multi-view. I'm not sure I know how to get to it yet because I haven't really played along <laughs> too much with this yet. But you can get a multi-view of all your incoming sources. It won't be full motion on the iPad, but as you can see on the screen here, it is running uh, at full blast. And it can stream out as well and record all without a PC. So it has a lot of capabilities that you might find with OBS, but in a hardware solution that, of course, will cost a lot less than the PC. The iPad is optional, but you'll probably want it for configuring uh, some of the scenes that they've got running here. I'm going to try to get one of these in because I'm, I'm really excited about all the developments with live video production, and it's never been easier or less expensive uh, to get started as a YouTuber, and this is a great way to do it. So we stopped by the anchor table, and we're taking a look at the Powerhouse 100. It's 159 bucks. It's going to come out a little later this year. 27,000 milliamp hour battery in it. And the size of it is kind of large. But the reason it's large, and I'll have Sarah zoom in a little bit here, is that it has an AC output on it. So you could plug in a laptop or something that doesn't have USB-C charging capability. It'll support up to 100 watts out the AC. And that component requires the product to be larger. But in addition to that, you've got two USB 3 charging ports here, at least regular USB charging ports. Uh, and you also have a USB-C output that will do 45 watts from the battery and a light, too, so you can light up stuff if you need to. So pretty neat product. This might be useful to some folks that might want to plug something in that's 100 watts or less when they're out on the road. So we're at the WD table, and of course, WD owns SanDisk, and they have a new product here called the EB. This is, the best way to describe this is as a photo appliance. It is a single purpose network-based storage device for photos and videos. It has a terabyte of storage. It costs $129. It's got a USB port on the back so you can expand storage if you happen to fill it up. And when you get home, it just dumps all your photos onto it. But you can share it with friends and family, have other people load their photos in as well. I think there's some degree of account management with it, too. We'll try to get one of these in to see how it works. But it's kind of a neat take on network-attached storage. Photos only, and there's no subscription fee. You buy it, and you're done. So we stopped by the HP table, and they've got some new stuff. This is an all-in-one, the HP NV32. It's got a bunch of different configurations. It starts around 1800 bucks. A couple things that I like about it is that it has a discrete GPU. It's got NVIDIA RTX graphics, all the latest Intel chips on it. Got a nice sound bar, six speakers. It's loud in here, so we can't get a real good sense of that, but they tell me it's the loudest one on the market. And it does a couple of other things beyond all of the hardware. Um, you've got a wireless phone charger under here, so when you put your phone down, it will start charging your phone wirelessly if you line it up in the right spot. And the keyboard is one of these multi-paired Bluetooth keyboards. And it's got a slot here, so you can pop your phone down on it, hit a button on the keyboard, and use the keyboard with your phone or tablet. And then when you're done, you come back and just put it back on the computer and instantly transfers back. Cool stuff. Uh, eager to check this out, because I like an all-in-one that has the integrated uh, GPU, and this one's got it. Now, CES has been all about the bezels, or the lack thereof, and they have made the bezel smaller on their Spectre 15 all-in-one. So this is the old Spectre 15, and this is the new one. So they've got the same size screen, but because they were able to reduce the lower bezel, they've made it smaller. And like anything with these laptops, there's a lot of different configuration options. We'll put up some pricing on screen there so you can see what it costs, but pretty cool stuff here from HP. So this is something that I am very excited about. This is the StarSense Explorer DX, and it is a Newtonian telescope, but it's got some integration with a phone, so you can actually find stuff, even if you're not a real expert when it comes to astronomy. And so what you got here is an app, and as you can see as I'm moving the telescope around, it's got a little crosshair, and if I want to look at the star Rigel, for example, based on the location of where I'm at, and based on something else I'm going to show you in a minute, it'll tell you when you're locked on the object, and then you just look at it. It's pretty cool. Now, it's not motorized, but you can fine-tune it here with these little uh, controls as, you know, here. So if you want to get it just right, you can do that. Um, really cool stuff. This is about a 5-inch or so Newtonian telescope. These are really good telescopes to start with. $399 for the whole thing. I can't believe that it's that affordable for something that can really bring a lot of educational value to your house. Now, here's something else I want Sarah to take a look at. She's going to go around to where the phone is. 
because the way it works, in addition to the GPS, is it's got like a star tracker similar to what spacecraft use. And this mirror here will uh, basically be pointed up at the sky and it works with your phone's camera to take a look at the star field. So that is how it's able to figure out what you're looking at. So it's really easy, at least from what I'm seeing here, to get started with your own backyard astronomy, provided your backyard is dark enough. And I'm going to probably get one of these very soon. It comes out today. Uh, and uh, start using it with my daughter because a few months ago we were taking a look at Saturn with one of my older telescopes that's really hard to work with and she was completely amazed by the fact that she could see Saturn with her own eyes and this is certainly going to uh, do a lot more there. So good stuff here. We're going to try to get one in and uh, give it a good review. So that is going to do it for this dispatch number one from CES. We've got a, hopefully a couple more to come so stay tuned for that. I want to thank ARM, our sponsors. You're going to see some stuff from them uh, probably tomorrow morning. So stay tuned. There's more to come here from the show. And I really appreciate all of you tuning in. I am still here for a day or two. So if there's things you want me to try to find, do let me know down in the comment stream. And I'll do my best to try to find it while I'm here or at least get some information for all of you. So I'm going to go to bed now. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.